to Ensemble Hesperi's new series, Walking Those Musical Streets, where we wander around central London when it's very quiet, finding all those places uh, which were there in the 18th century, places where composers lived, musicians lived, music was printed. We're going to go and walk around. So what's our theme for today, Tom? Well, our theme for today is St. Martin's Lake. We're currently standing just outside St. Martin in the Fields Church that you can see behind us in probably one of the most iconic places in London, Trafalgar Square. But in the 18th century, this wasn't Trafalgar Square. That came later. But that's where we're standing now, just outside the National Gallery, the National Portrait Gallery, and St. Martin in the Fields. There's been a church on this side of St. Martin in the Fields since the medieval times. But the church that you see behind us with its splendid columns was built in 1726, designed by James Gibbs. And of course, in the 18th century, while St Martin the Fields would have been here, Trafalgar Square wasn't here, can you believe that? Um, and instead, there was the Royal Mews, um, which of course is now at Buckingham Palace, and um, would have housed all the horses and the ceremonial carriages for the royal family. Um, and also, now where you see the National Gallery, and the National Portrait Gallery, um, that would have been where St Martin in the Fields churchyard was. Um, so it looks very, very different to how it was today. Well, I'm now standing a little further up St Martin's Lane. It doesn't really feel like St Martin's Lane here, and in fact it's called St Martin's Place today, but the lane would have extended right down to what is now Trafalgar Square. And opposite me here is the National Portrait Gallery. And in the 18th century, this wasn't here of course, there was Duke's Court, which was one of the little courts just off here. And that was the site of one of the most famous violin makers in London in the 18th century. William Forster, part of the Forster family of violin makers. Here we are at the Duke of Chandos pub. The Duke of Chandos, James Bridges, was a, a wonderful, influential artistic patron of the 18th century arts, and particularly music, and he was a very, very important patron of Handel. Um, and of course, we all know Handel's Chandos anthems, um, so we have uh, here the Duke of Chandos pub now, and just over here there was Chandos, there is still Chandos Street and also Chandos Place. So just off St Martin's Lane, there were lots and lots of little music shops. At the moment we're in Mays Court, where there were the Mays buildings, which is where there was the Music Cellar Verre. And um, just where we were, in Chandos Street, um, we had Michael Roche and Company, um, who had a music shop called the Guitar and Flute. So you can imagine that there were lots and lots of different music shops with wonderful names like the Guitar and Flute, the Harp and Hot Boy, um, so there. in these little courts just off St Martin's Lane. Well, the air 
area that we're in now, around Covent Garden and bottom of the Strand, Trafalgar Square, this was an area that was populated by many, many Scottish people in the 18th century. And just behind us, or perhaps round about that area, was St Peter's Court, where the first congregation of Crown Court Church of Scotland um, met in a meeting house before they moved to Crown Court, um, which is just further up um, in Russell Street. <laughs> Court, a very ancient part of this street, and a part that was again full of music shops and music engravers. We know that at St Martin's Court in the 18th century um, there was a couple, John and Sarah Phillips, who owned a music shop here, and here they actually sold Giuminiani's part of playing the violin. <laughs> Well, St Martin's Court today is actually full of restaurants and bars, and as is the whole of this area really, it's full of lots of chains. But I'm now on Cecil Court, which is one little street down from where I was a moment ago, and this is actually now full of engravers and antique sellers, and it gives a little bit more of the impression of what it might have been like in the 18th century. Do come and have a look. Of course, apart from the particular situation we're in at the moment, it is very quiet. And I can imagine in the 18th century, this might, would have been a much more bustling and busy area. And now we're at the top of, uh, well, almost the top of St. Martin's Lane, near Leicester Square. Um, and the tube station is just around the corner. Um, so here, Somewhere around this area was where Henry Ford developed a new type of letterpress for music printing. Um, now we're not quite sure where his shop, the Lyre and Owl, was. Um, it's either perhaps where the Bella Italia is now, it could be where the Perret is now, and the Perret. Or alternatively, and this is my, my preferred choice, just over there where perhaps the Long Egg pub is. Thank you everybody for joining us along St Martin's Lane in 18th century London. Uh, we're about to get a cup of tea now after so much walking around. But uh, do join us next week. What are we doing next week, Tom? We're going to be exploring the musical world of the Strand. Oh, that's very interesting. It lots, is going to be an interesting one. Lots of one. stuff to learn there. Very Fantastic. Busy. So join us for episode two of Walking Those Musical Streets. Thank you.